All right, we're going to demonstrate <clears throat> some common suture techniques for skin closure. We'll start with the instruments. Um, these are needle holders, and they're smooth. There's no teeth in them because usually on skin you're going to deal with uh, three main sizes, 4.0, 5.0, and 6.0. And the 6.0 and 5.0 is a little too small to use with teeth. It'll slip through. The important thing for good technique is to have uh, good forceps. These are Adson tissue forceps one by two teeth. And the key to a good forcep is when you gently squeeze it, there won't be any gap between each arm. If you have to squeeze very, very hard, it's fatiguing. And if they don't come together at all, you won't be able to grab the needle. And it's very difficult then to do a running stitch or um, interrupted uh, subcutaneous stitches. OK. We're going to demonstrate the simple interrupted, also called the percutaneous stitch, or abbreviated PQ. You want to angle just away from the wound edge, across to the other side. And we'll do a surgeon's knot, go around twice. the thread flat. There's your square knot. Pull the knot off to one side. Probably want to get the hand action here more. We're tying the knot. If you have a long thread, stick your middle finger out and hold that thread out of the way. Then use the back of your middle finger, the back of your middle finger to feel the tension on the thread so you don't break it. Going out of the view there. So stick your finger out, hold that thread out of the way, over and under. If you get lost when you're first tying these over and under if it gets confusing. Put the needle holder where the laceration is. And if the needle and thread is over here, that means you have to go this direction. And now the needle and thread's over on that side. I have to come back this way and go under. When they say under, you're going underneath this thread here. You do not, a common mistake is people will go like this and then they go over the top of the thread to grab the tail. Make sure you stay underneath that thread when you grab the tail. And one way to help yourself is stick your finger out and hold that thread out of the way here, and then you'll never make that mistake. Pull the knots tight so there's no gap in between the knots. Whenever you cut any sutures on the surface, leave a little bit of a tail. People ask, well, how far away from the edge should I go? <clears throat> Look at the thickness of the dermis. And typically you can go uh, half the, dis the thickness of the dermis away from the edge or the same thickness of the dermis. And it, part of the art of suturing is figuring out uh, how much you need to do. Now if you want to rearm in the middle, never grab the tip of the needle with the needle holder. Grab with the forcep before you pull the needle all the way through, rearm it, then pull it through, and you won't drop the needle and fumble with it. Sometimes you do that when you want to make sure you don't hook a tendon or a blood vessel or something underneath. You go around twice for that surgeon's knot. There's your square knot. Pull the knot off to the side. The reason you pull the knot off to the side is if you leave the knot over the wound, it'll leave a little hole there when it's healing. And once you get the first knot perfect and square, you don't have to keep going back and forth like this with your hands as long as you go over and under and pull that knot tight so there's no gap, it'll lay right. I'm putting a lot of extra knots in here so you can see. I'll slow it down a little bit. Use the back of your finger to hold that thread out of the way, then use the back of your finger to feel the tension so you don't break the thread. So over, under. All right, that's a simple interrupted. All right, we're going to demonstrate our second interrupted stitch. This is called the buried interrupted or subcutaneous stitch. 
uh, I abbreviated sub Q. <clears throat> this is the most difficult one to learn, but the most important for cosmetic closures. Typically, you're going to do something like this on the face. I'd like to point out that I'm using a monofilament 40 nylon thread, which is non absorbable, to demonstrate this so you can see it rather than what you would normally use, which would probably be a 5 0 um, monofilament uh, synthetic absorbable suture material. We have a smaller needle than we use for the uh, surface. You're going to start on the inside of the wound below the dermis. You're going to angle up and shoot for the epidermis-dermis junction. I don't know if you can see that here, but there's the needle. Now never grab the tip of the needle. Always grab with your force up there and pull it up. Before you pull it all the way out, you could rearm it and then pull it. Now, you, it's very important that you line this up to the other side exactly. So take your fingers and pull the wound lengthwise this way to line it up. And normally there'd be blood on here and you could line it, lay it down on the other side like this and make a little chalk mark or a little blood mark. Put your forceps right next to where you want to go, evert the edge, and then start from the top and go down at the same depth as you did on the other side. Now, a subtle important thing is you want to make sure that your needle and thread are on the same side as the tail. What I mean by that is this tail and the needle and thread have to be on the same side. You don't want to be on opposite sides of this piece of thread, or otherwise when you tie it, it won't get tighter. And you want it to get tighter when you do the inside stitches. Now, you never do a surgeon's knot when you're doing sub-Q stitches, because you do want it to get tighter. So just do a square knot. Now, the needle and thread's over on that side, your needle holder's here, so you have to start with the, like you're doing the under stitch. And that's because everything's kind of upside down. So you just go around once, grab that tail, pull parallel with the cut. Now you're going to go over on that second half of the knot. Now this is the most important part. This is where you pull it and jiggle it, get the edges to come right together so the edges are touching and it helps give you a version. So that's two knots right there. And we'll just put in a last one. So we've got five throws, two and a half knots. When you cut the thread, make sure you don't leave any tail. Pull up on it, slide your iris scissor down into the wound parallel with the cut, and you feel the knot, then cut. All right, let's take a look at it and analyze it. If you could zoom in on that. All right, you can see that the edges are even on top this way, very important, and also this way. You would go all along the wound and do that on somebody's face, and then you could use skin glue to close it, or steri strips, or little 6-0 running stitches and take them out within three to five days to avoid any stitch marks. Let me demonstrate this one more time. Start from the inside, come up. Pull the one lengthwise, line it up on the other side. Vert the edge. Stay on the same side as the tail. Pull it, get that edge together. Okay, pull up on both threads. Slide down with your eye scissors to the knot and cut so there's no tail. There you go, you buried interrupted or subcutaneous stitch. All right, now we're going to move on from the interrupted to the mattress sutures. There's three of them I'd like to demonstrate, vertical, horizontal, and half-buried mattress stitch. We'll start with the vertical mattress, sometimes called the far, far, near, near. It's used uh, in areas where the, you need good eversion, maybe there's some wound tension, and you're not worried about a cosmetic result, so maybe a trauma patient or something. Okay, we'll do it right next to the simple interrupted. So we're going to do <clears throat> the far, far first. So, Normally I would go in here, so you got to back away a little further. This is hard for beginners. Sometimes they get too close to the wound edge. And uh, typically you rearm it in the middle on something like this. Make sure you don't 
hook any tendons or nerves. So there's the far, far. Now, every mattress stitch, your hand position stays the same. Beginners have trouble. The students have trouble in the beginning uh, messing around with the needle holder. Never change your hand position in your needle holder. Just All you got to do is turn the needle over upside down like that for all their mattress stitches for the second half. So my thumb was still up. Instead of the needle pointing up like this, you just turn it so the needle's pointing down. Now I'm going to do the near, near part. You just bite it near and near and tie it off like normal. You can see how it gives you excellent wound diversion. Now, this is a dead pig pork belly where your bacon comes from. It's a little dried out. You can see that it, whenever you do the vertical mattress like that, sometimes the, it exposes the dermis on the inside. It's not that big of a deal. But when you have thick enough skin, you know, there's another option you have. Rather than going through the dermis all the way on the near near, you can go intradermal and it'll close that gap up a little bit. So I'll demonstrate it the same way, only doing it intradermally on the second half. So I'm going to go from one side to the other without the arming in the middle. If you have a big needle, you can do it that way. So remember, you just turn the needle upside down and rearm it. If you have a big needle and you want it to feel smaller, you can choke up on it a little more for the near and near part. So this time I'm going to go intradermally when I exit here. See how the needle is in the dermis right there? And then go intradermally at the same depth on the other side. And exit on the surface. Now when you tie it off, it'll close any gap you had in the dermis. And let's compare the two. Here, I don't know if you can see it zoomed in, it's a little more open than here. Is, it's a little more closed at the dermis junction. <clears throat> All right, that's your vertical mattress. All right, we're going to do the horizontal mattress stitch now. Again, this is for um, good wound aversion. <clears throat> it's uh, also in areas that have a little more tension, perhaps. You could use it in the fascia area as well as on the skin. We'll do it right next to our vertical mattress. It's like putting two stitches in one. I'm just going to do like two simple interrupters, right to left with my hand. Again, turn the needle over, upside down when you do a mattress stitch. Now the distance from this side to this side will be equal to the distance to the next stitch. So you're making sort of a square. You're going all the way through the dermis, too. Okay. Now you just tie it off like normal with a surgeon's knot. Let's see how it really everts the edge there. Exposes the dermis. It'll still heal all right. You want eversion more than inversion. It'll Remember, it's going to contract as the wound heals. All right. Let me show you the same stitch, only this time I'm going to tie it a little differently. And I'll demonstrate it with a pig foot. Because quite often you're going to get a laceration between the thumb and the index finger because somebody was opening up a can of uh, tuna fish or dog food or something and cut their hand with a knife or the edge of the can. So this is a good place to do a horizontal mattress stitch because typically on a human you're going to use 5-0 monofilament nylon and you have to leave the stitches in for about uh, 
10, 12, maybe even 14 days, and quite often they'll be buried when you do the regular horizontal mattress stitch. So I'll show you how to do a pulley stitch, and that avoids having it get buried. Also, in this particular area, you don't need to put any sub-Q stitches in the hand. You wouldn't want to, and <clears throat> you can't do simple interrupteds because quite often the, the skin will overlap like this, and it just won't heal, and when you take the stitches out, it just pops open. And a vertical mattress, you don't have the room in between the fingers typically to do a vertical mattress, so we'll do a horizontal mattress here. I'm just going right to left, turn the needle over, I'm going to go left to right, now it's the same way we did it on the surface of the pork belly, but this time I'm going to make a little loop on the other side, and I'm going to go through the loop with the needle holder and grab the tail. That way, when I go to tie it, it makes like a little Y chromosome looking stitch. It makes it much easier to remove it, though. It won't get buried. And not only does it avert the wound edge, but it also closes that dermis up better, too. I can demonstrate that again with a little bit longer thread. Let's analyze that one. You can see how it closes the wound nicely, and by having the thread go across each side, it brings the dermis together nicer too. Okay. Let's do that one again only I need more thread. I can do it in the same spot. Uh, are these halogen lights? Time. You ready? Okay, we're going to do the horizontal mattress again with a little bit longer thread and demonstrate the same <clears throat> horizontal mattress with a pulley stitch. A pulley stitch is one where you go through the loop. And you can do it with vertical mattress too. out of the way so you can see. See, I'm going to go around the thread twice and stick the needle holder through that loop, grab the tail, and then as I pull it, you can see it better there how it lays. And pull it till you get the aversion you want. There's your square knot. There. Excellent stitch for in between fingers and toes and uh, in between the thumb and index finger when somebody cuts themselves with a knife. And if you do that pulley stitch, it's much easier to remove the stitches after a couple of weeks, and it won't be all buried. And plus, it closes up the, uh, instead of having the dermis stick up like this, it closes that dermis a little nicer like that. So, horizontal mattress, pulley stitch in between the fingers and toes. All right, we're going to demonstrate another mattress stitch. This one's called the half berry mattress stitch. Also the corner stitch, because that's usually where it's used on a corner. And sometimes an apical stitch, apical flaps and stuff. Here we have a nice uh, V-shaped laceration with a flap. And you don't want to just put a simple interrupted along the tip, because it compromises the blood supply. And we're going to do uh, a half berry mattress where we're going to go through the tip or the apex of that flap with an intradermal stitch. So when it's tied off, it's going to look like a horizontal mattress stitch on this end here. So when you're visualizing where to start, you want to make sure that when you tie it, you're not going to go right across the tip. You want to be back away from the tip a little bit. So if you have a V shape, just extend it into like an X shape and kind of go along that dotted line in your mind there. And that's where I want to enter then about right here. Now how close to the V corner you come is determined by how thick the skin is. So it's only a few millimeters thick and I have to visualize how much of a bite I'm going to take. You don't want to take too small of a bite where it will rip 
and you don't want to take too big of a bite where the tip will be flopping around. So I'm going to go. This is an easy one for students to learn because you go very shallow with your bite. You can see here that I'm intradermal with the needle exiting in the dermis. You don't want to go all the way through. Grab the needle with your forcep before you pull it all the way through. Lock the needle holder and then pull it through. And that way you don't drop the needle and fumble with it. Okay, now here you go intradermally from side to side through the tip. Okay, side to side through the tip. The depth is determined by where you exited there. Again, rearm the needle. <clears throat> now I'm going to go in intradermally here and exit away from the corner. And now when you tie it, it should pull that tip right up into the corner. So you only see half of that mattress stitch because the other half is buried. Half buried mattress stitch, corner stitch. Now a common mistake that uh, students make is they go all the way through the dermis with the needle on the first part of it. Then they go intradermally through the tip and then all the way through the dermis again. What happens is it pulls the tip down below the dermis. A common mistake to make in the beginning. Make sure you go intradermally. See, this should all be on the same level plane. Then you could finish it off with uh, sub-Q stitches, horizontal mattress, or simple interrupted. The key thing is here you want to be away from the tip with this stitch. Here's the tip there, and you're away from the very tip. And this is a good stitch to use for corners so um, that it doesn't compromise the blood supply to the tip. All right, we're moving on to the running sutures now. We're going to do the simple running stitch, sometimes called an over and over. It's just like doing a bunch of simple interrupted stitches without stopping. It's excellent for long straight lacerations, uh, like the forehead or a leg. Uh, if you're going to do it on the forehead, of course, you're going to do the buried interrupted sub-Q stitches first. Again, we're using kind of a large thread 4-0 so you can see it on a filament nylon. Right, we're going to finish this laceration here in our pork belly. <coughs> So we just start with a simple interrupted stitch. Put in a square knot. Pull the knot off to the side. Whenever you do a running stitch in monofilament, make sure you put in at least like four knots so that it doesn't come unravel. Now, <clears throat> all you have to do is uh, put in another simple interrupted stitch. I want to be about that far from the next one, and I'm going to focus on going right to left, perpendicular to the wound edge. The wound edge is going in this direction. I want to be perpendicular to it. And put it in just like you would put in a simple interrupted. You want to use your forcep to visualize what you're doing so you don't hook anything important underneath. Now, this is the important technique for speed. You rearm the needle here, then pull it through. I didn't drop the needle. I didn't fumble with it. The speed comes in from doing something once and not fumbling with your needle. Again, use your forcep to visualize what you're doing. Right to left. Put it in perpendicular to the wound edges. Rearm your needle, pull it through. Some books will have you uh, <clears throat> do it at a 45 degree angle or so, so then on the surface it looks perpendicular. But it's much more difficult to do it that way. It's just easier to do it perpendicular with your needle, and so it's diagonal on the surface, doesn't matter. Practice this technique of rearming it without fumbling with the needle. That's where the speed comes in. Now you may do a locking stitch accidentally. Let me show you how that happens. If I grab the thread 
on that side and pull it like this. See how it locks? Oops, you might do that accidentally. I don't recommend you use a locking stitch. It compromises the blood supply and strangles the tissue. Just pull the needle back through like that and you're okay. All right, we're, one more stitch and then we'll tie it off. I'll show you how to tie it off. Okay, here's our last stitch. You just leave a loop on the last stitch and then do a surgeon's knot grabbing that loop. Now it's important that you make a square knot here because it'll get tighter and tighter as you tie it if it's a slip knot. So make sure that it's laying square like that and now it won't get tighter when I do the other parts of the knot. And you do want to put in at least four or five knots here, maybe six on a kid because this isn't really a good knot and it may unravel or something if the kid's playing with it. So put in a bunch of knots here when you're tying this one off. When you cut the thread, you're going to have three tails on this end and one tail where you started. So there's your simple running stitch. All right, we're going to demonstrate another running stitch called the running intradermal or the running subcuticular stitch or running sub-Q stitch. This one is often used on the uh, abdomen after a C-section. You've closed up the muscle fascia and you come up to the dermis and you just want to close it quickly with a running intradermal stitch. It's not as cosmetic as doing uh, one in buried interrupted stitch at a time like on a face, but it is uh, very cosmetic and quick. And then you would just use skin glue on the surface or steri strips. Lots of different ways of starting and ending, ending this suture. I'm going to start it with a buried interrupted like I uh, normally like to start inside stitches. And that way it's locked and I don't have to worry about it. Now again, I'm using a non-absorbable suture so that you can see it. This is a 40 monofilament nylon. Typically you would use a uh, 4-0 monofilament absorbable suture and of course you never use any dyed suture in a uh, dermis stitch otherwise it might show through like a tattoo so make sure you always use um, clear or white uh, sutures for the uh, inside Okay, so this was just a sub two stitch, and I'm just going to cut the one tail. And now we do a, a running intradermal stitch. We're basically going to go back and forth. <clears throat> now, how um, deep you go is determined by the uh, skin thickness. So you want to be at the same depth on each side. You just go across to the other side, avert your edge, you just bite it. Rearm that needle before you pull it through. See, pull the needle, rearm it. Pay attention how deep you are on one side. This pork belly is pretty thick in this particular area, and normally you would use probably a bigger needle than this one. And part of the art of doing this is how big of a bite do I take, how close do I come to the surface and all that. That just comes with practice. And if you take too big of a bite, and uh, it'll be a little more scalloped than you might like and just put the bites a little closer together.
Okay, we're down at the end now. <clears throat> this time, I'm going to go put in my last stitch on the right side. And then I'm going to come back in the other direction with the left <clears throat> I'm going to come across to the other side and head back in the uh, direction we came from. And to tie this, a common way to tie it now is to do a hand tie here. Let me demonstrate that for you. We'll zoom out with the camera a little bit. <clears throat> so what you do is you just Hold your thumb and index finger with the last part of the thread make a loop and you're holding the needle and thread on it in your right hand. And you're just going to stick your middle finger across and grab that thread. And then as you let go with your thumb and index finger, put them down into the hole, the thumb and index finger into the hole. And then when you open up your fingers, you'll be pulling it down closed. So again, you just grab it with your middle finger, let go with your thumb and index finger. Now you have it. You could come up this way with your thumb and index finger, but then it won't really pull closed very well. I like coming in from this direction, then I can use my index finger to pull it shut. This is a slip knot. It's not really a true knot. You do that three times, and then after the third one, you grab it and pull the whole thing through, and then pull it shut. Now take your needle, rearm it, and this time you go down into the wound and pop out as far away from the edge as you want. And then when you pull the needle out, that thread will pull that knot down below and then cut it flush with the surface and it's gone. Here's your running intradermal and then you would use skin glue on the surface. Very good. All right, I'd like to demonstrate a figure eight suture now, a vertical figure eight. This one is excellent for parallel lacerations in a case where the island of tissue is a little too close to the edges where you wouldn't want to sew up each cut individually, but it's a little bit too much tissue to cut out and then sew up uh, without that there. Sometimes uh, folks have tried to do horizontal mattress stitches and going intradermally through the island of tissue, but it puckers and it's time consuming and difficult to do. The vertical figure eight's fast and easy and it gives you the aversion you want. So you just start on one side like you're putting in a simple interrupted. And then you go into the island of tissue like that, right to left. Now you turn the needle upside down like you're doing a mattress stitch. So you just turn the needle over. Now you're going to come back in the other direction. Come up in the island of tissue kind of next to the other spot. And you're done. And when you tie it, it looks like two separate sutures. It works really good on parallel lacerations. You don't have to do the stitch for every part of it, for instance, you could mix it up a little bit. You could do running stitches here and there, and then just use this occasionally if you need to line things up and get some aversion. Let's take a look at it. You see how it brings those edges together nicely, and it's quick and easy compared to trying to put in a horizontal mattress there. So that's a vertical figure eight.